Kevin, I want to clarify, it's not just the pavement that has dipped. Take a look at the bridge from where we're standing, and you can see it is the entire bridge. The other side of the pier only dropped 22 inches, so about 5 inches lower, which means the pier is lopsided. On this inspection report for the Leo Frigo Bridge, it does mention that there were some cracks seen in the column. So I asked investigators if that was perhaps a preliminary sign, and DOT engineers tell us that there is a hinge separating that sunken portion from the rest of the bridge, and in this case, this is a really good thing. It means that the part of the bridge going over the Fox River and the railroad tracks isn't affected at all by what's happening on the portion of the bridge that's currently sagging. One factor the federal government will take into account before granting federal relief funds is what caused the pier to sink into the ground. If the investigation shows it was just normal wear and tear, the request for financial help will likely be denied. For the Wednesday morning I-43 commuters who are still a bit sleepy, I went uh, westbound, I noticed it, and I kind of thought I was dreaming, you know. Driving across a quickly sinking 400-foot stretch of the Leo Frigo Bridge woke them right up. It looks like there's a part that's sagging. A part that's sagging? Yes. The 911 calls came in around 4.45 a.m. The bridge was closed before 5.30, forcing an estimated 40,000 motorists to find a new route indefinitely. Could be months, could be a year. DOT engineers determined the cause of the sag was a pier that suddenly settled, causing the column and the section of the bridge it supports to sink an estimated 20 inches, all within hours. We're doing uh, survey information. We're taking constant measurements on that pier, not only on other piers adjacent to it, to make sure nothing, nothing is moving or what's happening right there. According to a Department of Transportation report, the Leo Frigo Bridge was inspected less than a year ago. And at that time, investigators say the bridge was fine. Although this report does mention there were several cracks in one of the columns of the bridge. So I asked investigators if that was perhaps an early indicator that the bridge was sinking. They say no, it was only cosmetic and has nothing to do with the problems we're seeing now. The DOT doesn't have a timeline or a price tag on fixing the bridge just yet, but Governor Walker promised it will happen, whatever the cost. Once we know the full details of what's required uh, to fix this bridge, we will fix this bridge because it's not only important to Green Bay and to Brown County, it's important to the state of Wisconsin. The sagging Leo Frigo Bridge has now been closed for more than 36 hours, and DOT engineers still have no idea when it might reopen. But they have identified the source of the problem, Pier 22, a vital part of the bridge's support system. DOT engineers have determined that one side of the pier has sunk 22 inches into the ground, while the other side of the pier has sunk 5 inches further, 27 inches into the ground, which means the pier is now lopsided just like our tripod. When we look at the superstructure, based on that, we would expect to see the girders maybe moved off of their bearings a little bit, and we haven't seen that, at least from a distance. Engineers are using a laser beam to take measurements from a distance every six hours. They believe Pier 22 has stopped moving, but they still aren't sure it's safe to examine up close. And we want to make sure it's stable first, and then we'll decide from there what we can do to get in there and check it out without creating more instability or something like that. So we're really going to rely on some experts to help us with that. Regional and national experts have already arrived to aid in the investigation. They've already had a meeting this morning and we're developing a plan of action. The DOT says they hope to have a timeline for repairing and reopening the bridge by the end of next week. There's no question that there's a sense of urgency. But they'll take the time they need to make sure the job is done right. When the pier sank, the bridge sagged, causing all four Interstate 43 lanes to dip. And now 40,000 drivers a day are detoured. I've not hit any road rage, but I notice there's a lot more trucks downtown than there used to be. Quite a bit harder to make turns because you have people trying to change lanes, not knowing which way they're supposed to go. Let's face it, nobody likes to be stuck in traffic. But some downtown businesses are trying to help drivers make the best of it. Inspired by this dip on the I-43 Leo Frigo Bridge, Titletown Brewing created this Leo Frigo dip, which seems to have motorists smiling again. If people are maybe frustrated, they got to take a detour. Well, detour yourself over by Titletown, have a beer and some Leo Frigo dip. This is fun. You have to make something fun out of things that happen, and this is fun. You have to enjoy it. I mean, nothing you could do about it. Captain's Walk Winery has the same theory. I was pleasantly surprised to learn about the detour discount. So. Make it a little more 
fun for people that are being detoured off the highway and from their destination to come down and do some wine tasting. I love it. <laughs> You know, I think all the businesses should jump on board at the detour, detour discount. Starting next week, many more Green Bay businesses will.